Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast. In particular, today we're highlighting the Old Time Radio Superman Show at otrsuperman.com. On that uh, podcast series from 2008 to 2018, and for a few weeks in 2021, I went through every circulating Superman serial, as well as self-contained half-hour episodes. And there are so many great moments, uh, if you're a fan of Superman or curious about his history and uh, pop culture, it's worth checking out. Uh, Great Adventures, more than a thousand episodes over at otrsuperman.com, and you can check out all of our other podcasts over at greatdetectives.net. But now it is time for Mr. Chameleon. The original air date on this one is September the 15th, 1948, and this is the title of Case of Murder and the Man Who Saw Too Much. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of Bayer Aspirin. As all of you know, Mr. Chameleon is known in the police as Chameleon, the man of many faces, who appears in various impersonations to track down his prey. The audience always knows who Mr. Chameleon is, but the criminal he is tracking down seldom does. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon and the case of murder and the man who saw too much. Our story opens at twilight in that lively section of New York City where Broadway crosses Columbus Circle. Already electric signs are flashing in the dark and the sidewalks are swarming with hurrying forms. And lost in that crowd is the figure of a man stalking another man like a panther stalking its prey until suddenly the air is shattered by a cry of pain and terror. Uh, ah, I've been stabbed. I've been stabbed. Oh, no. Oh, ghastly. Wilfred, did you see that? Yes, I saw it. And I saw the man who stabbed him. Catch him. Catch him, somebody. The man in the gray suit. Don't let him get away. What's happened? It's murder. A man's been stabbed to death. Somebody said a man in a gray suit did it. And some time later, at central headquarters in the office of the police commissioner, the commissioner sits talking to Mr. Chameleon, the great detective who is known and feared throughout the underworld. The commissioner is saying... And that's all we have to go on, Chameleon. Some unidentified man who was with a woman cried out that a man in a gray suit did it. Well, that's something, Commissioner. Maybe the two witnesses will come forward and give us a more complete description of the killer. Yeah, but you know how people are. Scared to death to get involved in a thing like this. Certainly the killer wasn't lacking in nerve, stabbing a man to death in the early evening on a crowded street. And a man like Carl Lynch. Yes. We belong to several of the same clubs. Carl Lynch was a wealthy bachelor high up in the banking business. Patron of the arts. Hmm. Killer had his nerve to strike him down right under the nose of the police. Well, that seems to annoy you, Chameleon. Well, certainly it does. See, it's um, three hours since Lynch was murdered. The witnesses really should turn up very soon. For their sake, they should come to the police. The longer they stay away, the more dangerous it is for everyone. Don't you think we should have gone to the police instead of putting it off this way? It was so silly of us to come to the theater, darling. 
I can't keep my mind on the play, neither can you. Oh, it's a very good play, Millicent. The cast is excellent, especially that one actor. What's his name? Roger Appleby, who was just on in the first act. Yeah, he was really remarkable. Oh, stop it, Wilfred. You don't fool me for one minute. You're just as nervous as I am. I don't even like being alone in this theater box. I'd rather be in the orchestra, surrounded by people. <laughs> you have got the jitters, haven't you, dear? All right, we'll leave during the next intermission and go straight to the police. Can't tell them much, but at least I could identify the murderer if I saw him. Feeling better? Much better. So am I. This intermission should be over in a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's relax and... Oh, Mill Millicent. What's the matter? Have you a pin in your evening wrap? Something just pricked my arm. Oh, no, there's no pin. Well, there must be. It, it was a sharp, quick stab. And I, I feel so strange, so... So drowsy, as if... As, as if... Oh. Wilfred! Wilfred! Help! Hello. Yes, this is the police commissioner. What? Where? The Garrick Theater? What is it, Commissioner? Who is he, do you know? I see. Okay, send Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold over there. Okay, I'll call you back. Well, this is quite a large evening, Chameleon. A second murder in a box at the Garrick Theater. Any tie-in with the murder of Carl Lynch up at Columbus Circle? Not at first glance. Lady Millicent Hay, you know, the famous English beauty? Oh, yes, of course. Well, she went to the theater with her fiancé, a chap named Wilfred Crane. It seems he was attached to the American Embassy in London. Well, anyway, he died in the theater box, just like the... Chameleon, are you listening? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Commissioner, a play called Salt of the Earth is playing at the Garrick Theater. Well, what about it? I just remembered Carl Lynch had money in that play. Well, you'd better get over there, Chameleon. I'll leave orders that nothing is to be touched. No one is to leave the theater until you arrive. <laughs> Chameleon, is Wilfred really dead? Yes, yes, he died instantly, Lady Millicent. Oh. Someone must have hidden behind the curtains of the box here and jammed him in the arm with a hypodermic needle. Oh. The needle was filled with a deadly poison. But why? Why? Were you and Mr. Crane the persons who witnessed that other murder in Columbus Circle late this afternoon? Yes, we were. Wilfred and I were discussing it just before he died. We intended to leave during the next intermission and go to the police. Well, you should have come to us immediately. Anyway, there is your answer. Your friend was killed, Lady Millicent, because he saw too much. But, Mr. Chameleon, I saw that murder, too. Yes, I'm well aware of that fact. Um, where are you staying? At the Millbrook Hotel. Oh, that's fortunate. That's one of those small, exclusive places. What do you mean? Lady Millicent, from now on, you must not be alone, not even for one minute. I'm sending one of our women detectives home with you. Madeline, come in here, will you please? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Madeline, this is Lady Millicent Hay, Miss Madeline Evans, who happens to be a detective like myself. How do you do? How do you do? Madeline, you are to go with Lady Millicent to her hotel. You're to stay in the same room with her night and day. Is that really necessary, Mr. Chameleon? Yes, it is, Lady Millicent. If you want to remain alive... So, Madeline, remember, no one is to be admitted to Lady Millicent's hotel suite... Except myself. Is that clear? Perfectly clear, Mr. Chameleon. Right. Where's Dave? Right outside in the corridor. Detective Sergeant Arnold, Mr. Chameleon wants to see you. Okay, thanks. Say, Mr. Chameleon, the manager of that show, Ted Martin, is awful anxious to talk to no. you. And the actors are getting very indignant about being kept waiting backstage. Well, I'll get around to them as soon as possible. Uh, Dave, I want you to accompany Lady Millicent and Madeline. Now, you're to take up your post outside... The Millbrook Hotel. Now, um, I believe there's only one entrance. Is that right, Lady Millicent? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Good. Now, Madeline is going upstairs with Lady Millicent, Dave, and you are to keep an eye on that entrance. All night, if necessary. But, Mr. Chameleon... Dave, I... believe me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Nothing is more important than keeping watch over Lady Millicent. Lady Millicent. 
You look tired, Chameleon. Commissioner, I am exhausted. Did you ever try talking to a group of actors, each one giving vent to his personal brand of histrionics? Take my word for it, it is very wearing. Any definite leads on either of the murders? Oh, so many leads that they completely obscure the scent. All I'm sure of is that all roads lead to the Garrick Theater. Whom did you talk to? Well, um, first of all, Ted Martin, the theater manager. He's the brother of Lou Martin, the actor's agent. And right from the start, he hit the nail on the head when he said to me, Mr. Chameleon, you've got a tough job ahead of you. If you get anything out of these actors, I'll eat my hat. I've managed a lot of shows, but I've never known such an outfit for jealousies and feuds and just plain trouble. Well, isn't that uh, usual in your line of business, Mr. Martin? No, it's not. That's a legend built up by the public. Most actors aren't difficult. Well, not too difficult, anyway. But this company has been in a turmoil from the start. Due to what? Carl Lynch, I'm sorry to say. Oh? I hate to speak badly of a dead man, but from the day he put money in this show, there have been fireworks. Within a week, Mr. Chameleon, Lynch had incurred the bitter enmity of three people. Who? First of all, Roger Appleby. He's an actor whom Lynch had demoted from one of the leads to a minor part. His salary was cut, too, and Roger needed the money desperately. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Hess Markle, the stage manager. He has a bad temper and is, well, shall we say, unstable. Lynch once got him fired from a previous show. You tried to get him fired from this one? Correct, Mr. Chameleon. Oh. Thirdly, our little ingenue, Sally Holmes, who for some reason Lynch persecuted. He was consistently rude to the girl. Everything she did was wrong. Is, um, is she a pretty girl, Mr. Martin? Yes, very pretty, and a very good... Who is it? Me, Ted. Me and Sally. Oh, come in, Lou. Mr. Chameleon, this is my brother, Lou Martin, the agent. Lou, this is the famous detective, Mr. Chameleon. No kidding, the guy that disguises himself so that nobody knows him. How do you do it, chum? Um, how does an actor act? <laughs> oh, say, that's a thought. Same principle, hmm? Say, how would you like me to book you into television? Uh, suppose we wait until I solve Carl Lynch's murder and the murder of Wilfred Crane. Sure, that'll up your price. Which reminds me, Mr. Chameleon, I want you to meet Sally Holmes. How do you do, Mr. Chameleon? Well, how do you do? And you are very pretty, Miss Holmes. But you cannot leave the theater. How did you know that was what we wanted? Listen, she's got a radio broadcast, an 11.30 broadcast. Sorry, no one leaves this theater until I finish questioning all of you. Remember, there's been a murder committed. Yes, he's right, Lou. We shouldn't have asked. So we shouldn't have asked, but there's no harm in asking. Okay, chum, and don't you forget, Lou Martin says you've got a future in television. You know, Mr. Chameleon, you might just as well have let Sally Holmes go. I'll bet you dollars to donuts you'll get nowhere with your questioning. You're mistaken, Mr. Martin. Someone in this theater murdered Wilfred Crane, and I am going to find that murderer. Hmm. Well, let's wait and see. You know, theater people are very loyal to one another. You have to be an insider to really know what goes on here. And he was right, Commissioner. They all protected one another. I was the outsider, the common enemy. But that is going to be changed. How do you mean, Chameleon? Well, I... Oh, I'll take that, Commissioner. Hello. Mr. Chameleon? Hello, Dave. How goes it? I was just wondering, do you want me to stay on guard here at the Millbrook Hotel? I don't suppose you do. Where shall I go next? The devil are you talking about? Of course I want you to stay. But what for? When I saw you leave with the Lady Millicent Hay... D Dave, wait a minute. Is this some sort of joke? Why, no. You walked out of the Millbrook Hotel about 15 minutes ago with Lady Millicent Hay. You got into a car... That's enough. Go upstairs immediately to Lady Millicent's room and see what's happened to Madeline. Then report here immediately. I haven't been near the Millbrook Hotel. Commissioner, someone kidnapped Lady Millicent. They impersonated me. What? Now, only an actor could have done that. Can you imagine that? An actor disguising himself as me instead of my disguising myself as an actor. Because that is what I fully intended to do. And that's what I am going to do and break this case wide open. Mr. Chameleon and the case of murder and the man who saw too much continues in just a moment. When you're suffering from an ordinary headache, neuritic or neuralgic pain, there's nothing more important than fast relief, really fast relief. Millions who use Bayer aspirin to get such relief know that Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work almost the instant it's taken. Within two seconds, it starts disintegrating in your stomach, and as a result, relief comes with amazing speed. 
You can actually see how quickly Bayer aspirin acts by dropping one of these tablets in a glass of water. Before it touches the bottom of the glass, it starts to dissolve or disintegrate. Because Bayer aspirin does the same thing when you take it, you get the fast pain relief you want. In addition, Bayer aspirin gives you reliable relief. Its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect is a record unmatched by any other pain reliever. Remember this next time you want quick, dependable pain relief. Be sure to ask for Bayer aspirin by its full name, never by the name aspirin alone. Get the 100 tablet bottle and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of murder and the man who saw too much. It is later that night, and in Mr. Chameleon's office at Central Headquarters, a distraught Madeline Evans is saying bitterly, I'll never forgive myself, never, Mr. Chameleon. But that man's voice on the telephone sounded just like yours. He called up from the hotel lobby downstairs, and when the doorbell rang... You stepped into the hall and were promptly struck on the head and knocked unconscious. Yes. He dragged me into a closet, and then he must have knocked on Lady Millicent's bedroom door and convinced her he was you. And she went with him. Now, the murderer of Carl Lynch has already done away with Wilfred Crane, the first witness to his crime. Now he's got the second witness, Lady Millicent. Madeline, you realize that she is in terrible danger. She may already be dead. Yes. Yes, I know, Mr. Chameleon. Well, this tells us one thing about the murderer, however, and that down the field. What do you mean? Well, the person we're tracking down is certainly an actor. Clever one. So good at impersonating me that Lady Millicent actually went with him. That man I want to see. As Lou Martin said, he should have a future in television. Well, so should Rupert LaRue. Rupert? Who's he? Rupert LaRue, Madeline, is an old Shakespearean actor with prominent teeth and long gray hair. And since I won't have time to let mine grow, I'll have to wear a wig. Mr. Chameleon. Mm -hmm. And I'll uh, carry uh, press clippings, too. The printing department's taking care of them now. While the police are scouring the city looking for Lady Millicent, I am going to haunt the Garrick Theater and get a good look at that actor, Roger Appleby, and the stage manager, Hess Markle, and anyone else who might have impersonated me. But Mr. Appleby, forgive an old-timer like me for being a bit skeptical, but I've had years and years of stage experience. Did I show you my notices from... Uh, yes, you did, LaRue, many times. Sorry, sorry. But frankly, it's so ridiculous. The police suspecting you of impersonating Mr. Chameleon, that detective. Why, you couldn't possibly get away with it. Oh, well, I could if I wanted to. Really? How? As one artist to another, just how would you go about it? As I was saying, Mr. Markle, when I toured in Othello, I... Or am I boring you? Oh, that's okay, LaRue. I'm just kind of all in. Those dumb dicks started questioning me again today. I've got the notion I pose as that detective chameleon. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Quit it, will you? Uh, I don't let anyone laugh at me. Quit it. I, I'm sorry. I, oh, uh, excuse me. I, I didn't mean to scare you like that. I, I got a bad temper. I, anyway, I could take off chameleon if I wanted to. If Roger Appleby could, I could. But Appleby is a first-rate performer. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. But let me show you something. Let me show you just how I'd go about it if I were going to take on the part of chameleon. To the greatest artist of them all. To a truly great artist. To a superb performer. To... Uh... What are you doing in here? Oh... Good evening, Mr. Martin. Oh, it's, it's you, LaRue. I hope you don't mind my waiting in your office. Oh, no, sit down. You seem to have become a fixture around this place. Thanks to your kindness, Mr. Martin. You are a prince among theatrical managers. I'm also known along Broadway as a soft touch. Let's see now. You wanted a job, didn't you? 
Anything, Mr. Martin. Anything at all. Maybe my brother, Lou, the agent, could could get you into radio. No, sir. Not that. Never that. Never that. I promised myself that I would never stoop to radio. But anything else, even if it's a bit shady. Such as what? I'm not saying that you would do anything shady, Mr. Martin. Some theatrical managers are known for slightly crooked deals. But let him, without guilt, cast the first stone. Mr. LaRue, may I see those press clippings of yours again? You may indeed, sir, certainly. Here they are. Thank you. Yellowed with age, I'm afraid, but mine own. Mm. They seem to be on the level. On the level? My dear Mr. Martin. Mr. LaRue, suppose you come back tomorrow. It's quite possible I might be able to get you a job as, well, as a doorman or something similar. Will you do that? With pleasure. Shall I come here to your office? Why, yes, if you'd like to. I'd like to very much. I never get tired of looking at those fascinating photographs on the wall. No trace of Lady Millicent, Dave, is that right? Not a sign of her, Mr. Chameleon. For all we know, she's... No. No, Dave, she's still alive. She must be. Poor Madeline's sake. And I think I know where she is. I think I know who managed to impersonate me and get away with it. Well, they must be good. Yes, that's the point, Dave. That's a theory I've gone on. Must have been a very clever actor to have fooled you and Madeline. Well, here's the address. If I don't come out in half an hour, you know what to do. Suppose you're mistaken. If I am, Dave, I'm afraid we won't find Lady Millicent until it's too late. Now make yourself scarce. I'm going to ring the bell. Okay, see you later, Mr. Crane. Yes? Good evening. Is Mr. Ted Martin home? Why, I... This is his apartment, isn't it? I know it has an outside entrance. Yes, this is his apartment. Is he expecting you? He should be. Uh, you're Sally Holmes, aren't you? I saw you in the show at the Gaddock Theatre. Oh, did you? What did you think of it? The show, I mean. A pleasant trifle. Where's Mr. Martin? Right in here in the living room. But what did you think of my performance? Who is it, sweetheart? What the... Say, what are you doing here, LaRue? Oh, Mr. Martin, didn't you expect me? I thought you said tonight. Oh, of course, you didn't expect the young lady to be here. What? Now, wait a minute. Would you like me to come back later? Who is this character, Ted? And what business did you have with him that you didn't want me to know about? Who are you? Rupert LaRue. Perhaps you've heard of me. I toured the Middle West in... Um... 1700, I'd say. And you still haven't told me what business you've got with Ted. He hasn't any, Sally. He's been hanging around the Garrick Theater. And I told him if there were... Any odd jobs that I could do for him, I'd be only too happy to, even if they were a bit shady. So we reached an agreement. What about? Are you crazy? What about, Mr. LaRue? About Lady Millicent Hay. What's that? I understand her continued existence is becoming a burden. I'm afraid I wasn't supposed to discuss that in front of anyone. Say, what are you up to? What are you up to, LaRue? Leave him alone, Ted. You're not to touch him until I finish talking to Can't him. Can't you see he's lying? About what? Lady Millicent? Is that a gag? Shut up. Don't you dare to speak to me like that, Ted Martin. I thought you weren't very anxious to see me tonight. No wonder. You had plans that didn't include me. Mr. LaRue, what were you going to do about Lady Millicent? Well, take care of her, I suppose, and then take her someplace else, to some girl's apartment, I think. What? Sally, he's making this up. Why, no. Oh, is this the young lady who'd been getting money from Carl Lynch before he was murdered? Dear, I'm afraid I've spoken out of turn. I, I really had better go. You're not going anywhere, LaRue. Oh, don't look at me like that, Sally. Can't you see this is a trap? I told this man nothing. Then how could he know? How could a broken-down old ham like this LaRue... Miss Holmes, the trouble with the theater today... Oh, shut up. <laughs> How could he get this information unless you'd given it to him, Ted? I have no idea, Sally, but I'm going to find out. But of course you told me, Mr. Martin. You said this young lady had been blackmailing Carl Lynch, and because you loved her, you protected her. 
But you've become alarmed after Lynch's murder. So you wanted to get out from under. And fray me for the whole thing. Is that it, Ted? You were going to kill Lady Millicent and plant her body in my apartment. <gasps> Who's that? I think you know who it is. Ted, don't let him hurt me. Who is she talking about, Mr. Martin? Your accomplice? The man who rarely murdered Lynch and who poses Mr. Chameleon? Is that who's coming down the hall? Well, hi, Sally. Hi, Ted. And who's this old creep? What's your name, chum? My name is Chameleon. What? Chameleon. What? And you, Lou Martin, neglected to tell me that you were an actor before you became an agent. Not only an actor, but a famous impersonator, as I learned through your brother Ted here. Ted, you dirty rat. What did you have to tell him that for? Oh, he didn't tell me. But to his office, walls are covered with photographs. Half of them addressed to you, describing you as a great artist. I'm uh, flattered, of course, that it uh, took a great artist to impersonate me successfully. And... That still doesn't prove anything. Sally spilled the whole story, Lou. She gave it away that we intended to kill Lady Millicent. And Ted told Chameleon that we'd been blackmailing Lynch. No, no, Sally. Uh, Carl Lynch's cancelled checks made out to you told me that. And that uh, cover-up, that elaborate pretense of persecuting you. Poor Lynch. He was like a lot of other suckers in this town. He fell for you, Sally. And then the Martin brothers moved in and blackmailed him. Only Lynch threatened to tell the police. So he died. Am I right? Or was it Sally here, disguised as a man who did the killing? No! No, it was Lou. He stabbed Lynch, and then later he killed the witness. That man, Crane. Sally, look out! Ah! All right, all right, put them up. I'll use this gun if I have to. Don't move, Lou, Ted. Sally, you hurt? No, the knife missed me. I missed you by an you inch. You shouldn't have you... thrown that knife, Lou. You use knives better at close range. But um, at least you've given me the murder weapon. I wondered where that was. And now, you show me where you've hidden Lady Millicent Hay. Mr. Chameleon, when you walked into that room, it was like a miracle. I thought no one would ever find me. Well, no one thought of looking in the exclusive apartment of a successful theater manager and a successful blackmailer, I might add, Lady Millicent. It seems that uh, Ted Martin and his brother Lou had been blackmailing for years using Sally as bait. You were fortunate that they didn't kill you immediately, that they were worried as to how to dispose of the body. As a matter of fact, I, um, I believe Ted Martin fully intended to use old Rupert LaRue as a means of getting rid of you. Well, thank heavens Rupert LaRue was really you, Mr. Chameleon. Anyway, I'm deeply grateful. And you too, Miss Evans. Oh, please don't say that, Lady Millicent. It was due to my inexcusable carelessness and stupidity that they were able to kidnap you. Well, now, she's being dramatic. She's caught the acting fever. That's a fine thing to say, Mr. Chameleon. <laughs> I thought I'd get a rise out of you, Madeline. But that's better than letting you feel guilty, because you shouldn't. You know, the best of investigators have been trapped occasionally. And never forget, Madeline, that in our profession, eternal vigilance is the price of success. And of not being conked on the head. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. The way that millions get amazingly fast relief from common headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain is to take quick-acting Bayer Aspirin. Bayer Aspirin is one thing that really works and works quickly, and you can see the reason why with your own eyes. Just drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water and clock its disintegrating speed. Within two seconds, it will start to disintegrate, and because it does the same in your stomach, because it's ready to go to work almost instantly, relief comes with astonishing speed. In addition, you can take Bayer Aspirin with complete confidence, for of all pain relievers, none can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So when you buy, be sure to ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of the Game of Death. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson. 
with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. Friends, there's a new toothpaste in the market that you'll want to try. It's called Lion's Toothpaste. And it's not just another old toothpaste with an added ingredient, but is completely new and radically different in formula. For this reason, new Lion's Toothpaste does what no other toothpaste can do. Yes, laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth prove that it actually gets teeth brighter, two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands, brighter by far than any other toothpaste. So for a brighter smile, try this toothpaste that cleans without soap, polishes without chalk, Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon, the new mystery drama in The Case of the Game of Death, next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, I have to say, it was kind of fun to see uh, one of the villains uh, use uh, Mr. Chameleon's signature trick against him. Of course, if uh, there was an episode where that could plausibly happen, I think it would be the one where he's up against uh, people in the theater. I did think the disguise he adopted was probably one of the weaker ones I've heard. Uh, the voice was maybe a little less plausible, plus the character was particularly one note. Plus, I'm really dubious of the police labs in 1948 being able to easily uh, produce aged uh, clippings that would fool a theatrical producer and, and people who are very familiar with that sort of thing. Though I think the way he played... Uh, them off against each other what, and got the information he needed, I, I thought was really uh, clever. It was some really good manipulation on Mr. Chameleon's part. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I do want to go ahead now and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Heidi, Patreon supporter since August of 2015, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. And that will do it for today. If you uh, are enjoying the podcast, I do encourage you to rate and review it wherever you get your podcast from. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon. But coming up tomorrow, it's time for some adventure with The Man Called X, where... Uh, just think about it, Ken. Thousands of my people, their villages isolated for centuries, will at last be able to enjoy the benefits of modern civilization. Schools, hospitals, decent homes. It's a wonderful dream, Louis. Uh, but it's to be a reality, too. When we have completed the Bolivar Waterway. Bolivar Waterway? Oh, you mean your old idea of... Uh... Opening the interior rivers to navigation. See, yeah. see, by building a waterway almost 200 miles long. Uh, it's being financed by American interests who would profit handsomely from the iron ore mountains of the interior. But someone, some country perhaps, can does not wish that ore to reach your hungry steel mills. Mm. Hmm? Having trouble on the construction, John? See, si, see, si. breakdown of equipment, vital materials lost or stolen, a uh, dam has suddenly collapsed. It, it can tell me, does the name Colenda mean anything to you? Colenda, sure. Freelance international crook, specializing in sabotage. Is Colenda behind your trouble? Uh, I have reason to think so, Ken. That's why I come to you. And the first thing that you should know is... <laughs> All right, Chris. I'll see what I can do. 
I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Send your technical questions to Andrew at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>